Just a quick heads up, this video might be a bit long because I'll be talking about my new tool that I'm currently working on called Smart Menu. It's not available by itself. However, it is available as a beta version for those of you that have purchased Smart Tools bundle from us. So if you've purchased that, then you can go to ukrami.com, re-log in, and then you'll get this one in there. You, you also get Smart Ease. If you haven't seen me talk about this one in one of my previous videos, definitely check this out. It's not available by itself just yet, but it is available in the bundle, so you can get that as well. So Smart Menu, what is it? Well. It's a tool that I created to help myself first. I mean, anytime I create tools, it's basically if I find myself repeating the same steps over and over again, that's when I know it's time for me to create a tool. And Smart Menu is one of those tools because I don't know about you, but if you've ever created uh, the Smart, or not Smart, drop down menu, right? You have to kind of go here and you create this and it just takes some time to create just a simple menu. And this thing creates uh, the menu for you, but it also gives you more options and I'm gonna show it to you in this video. So let me show you this example. So right now I have this simple composition, it's a lower third, just as you can see, animates in here, it's a protected area. This whole thing, the whole composition is actually rigged up. It's ready to be a mogurt. So it animates in and then it animates out at the end like this. It does have protected areas so you can kind of stretch it however you want. You can make it any length you want in Premiere. So essentially, what you would do in Premiere, you would replace the, the image, right? You would drag the flag you want. You would change the name of the country. So as you can see, it's rigged. It would automatically adjust. But you would have to type it yourself. I guess you can move on this if you want. Uh, what else can you do? You would change the colors, right? The primary, secondary color kind of thing. So you would change like four things in Premiere and uh, you would rely on editors to do that to make sure they put the right flag in, make sure they type the correct spelling of the country and make sure they also use the correct color. So a simple drop down menu would be a perfect solution sometimes, right? You would uh, just create a drop down menu where they would just click on it. And then from the drop down menu, they pick a country like USA, they click on it. It automatically replaces the image to US flag. It automatically types out like USA, it changes the colors. So all that from just a simple drop down menu. And uh, all that is possible with this tool. Okay, so let me show you real quick. So we have this. So how do I do that? How do I create a simple drop down menu that can change everything? Well, we have this flag composition. So if I double click on it, it's this flag. If I go into it, you can see I have five of them in here, five images, but you can have as many as you want. And essentially what I wanna do, I wanna create a drop down menu on this layer that will list all five of these in the menu without me actually creating it myself, right? Drop down menu and then Brazil, and then you go over here and you type Brazil, you know, whatever. <laughs> you get the idea. Well, this tool does it based on your selection. So what you do, you just select the layer. Basically, you select in the order you want it create, right? If you select this one first, Brazil, then India, then in the drop down menu, you will put Brazil first, then India, and so on. So the order you select all of them is important. So I'm going to select all of these. Now, whatever you select last, and I'm gonna press Control Select. That's where it's gonna create all the controls in. So that's the layer where it's gonna create the drop down menu and other things that I'll talk about here in a second. Okay, so then I can go to this tool and I'm gonna name my drop down menu like a flag, maybe something like that is good. And then if I have nothing selected, if I run this, it will create a drop down menu, but it will it will not do anything, right? So here's the drop down menu, it doesn't do anything. But I'm gonna get rid of this. In fact, you can just press delete, boom, it gets rid of it. Now I'm gonna select the same thing, all of them, and then control select the last layer here. And then I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna enable visibility. So when I change the drop down menu, it will disable some layers. Basically, it will only show me the layer that I choose from the drop down menu. Then I'm gonna enable this color option and then also text. Basically, color option creates uh, two colors for each layer, primary and secondary color and uh, it comes in very handy, you'll see here in a second. Then we also have text, so if you enable that, it will create a text, like a guide text layer that will reference these in a text form, so you can like reference it in your expressions. And then the last one, basically it will take um, all the options that you're creating, it will also send it into the essential graphics panel that you can use in other compositions, and I'll show you that as well. So I have all of them checked, and then make sure you select the order, right? And then you would just run it like this, boom. And 
let me kind of explain what happened here. So we have the controls layer, the same one that we talked about, and it has a bunch of stuff in here. So in fact, I'm going to hide this. Now, I created these controls based, you know, basically the same ones you'll, you'll see here. Normally, I would create a pseudo effect, but I found that it's easier to create these controls because uh, anytime I work for a studio or a shop somewhere or like Fox Sports or something like that, it's such a pain sometimes to install a simple script because uh, especially scripts that create a pseudo effect because it creates it on a file, like a somewhere in the folder on, the, on your computer that you have to get permission from some engineers. So it just creates a lot of headaches. So I'm gonna try with this tool not to uh, create anything like a pseudo effect. So we're gonna try this. Okay, so as you can see, it creates a drop down menu like we talked about this, but this time when I change it to like Mexico, you can see it changes the logo. Okay, and not only that, it also gives me a text layer with the reference of my uh, whatever I chose, which this comes in very handy because I can reference it in my expressions. Okay, so that's good, but it also has two colors right here. We have color one and color two. Now, each layer that you've selected it also creates two color controls as well. So we have primary color and secondary color. And if you have a team logo or, it, I mean, I assume this could be like a team logo, but in this case, it's a team flag. So I'm going to double click here and I'm going to set for each of them like their own primary color. So Brazil, for example, primary color is probably the green and then secondary can be yellow. Then like India can be, I'm not sure which one's the primary. I'm going to say maybe green and uh, orange and then Mexico primary, probably green and then red. And we'll do the same thing for Portugal. I'm not sure which one's the primary. I'm going to do red and then green and then uh last one here let's do something like us let's do blue and red so you would set it up for each one because you know you want each team or each logo whatever to have primary and secondary color now the cool thing about this in the main control we have color one and color two so color one is set to primary and color two is set to secondary so whatever you choose like whatever team or country you choose like brazil you can see primary color is green and then secondary is yellow and if you go to us it's going to do that and the reason why i know that the first one is the primary because we have under options right here color one option it's set to primary now i can change it to secondary i can change it to custom and then i can choose the custom here if none of them none of those work right but i'm going to say yeah let's do first one let's do primary secondary option is secondary okay so you get the idea i mean it's basically that simple so you have all of these things that you can use in your designs. Not only that, it took all of them and pushed it into the essential graphics panel so that when you go into the main comp here, so we started here, we have the composition here, and notice we have the essential graphics properties, and all of them are available in here that you can reference and do all kinds of stuff with. Now notice we also have this, um, this text that it also pushed as a list. So whatever, you know, if I can go to here, here it is. So I can go to the text that I have here. Instead of me typing it manually, I can just link it up from here to this list. And notice it will automatically adjust it. So now I can change the country to something like, let's go India. Notice it will automatically adjust it. The animation stays the same. You can go to something like Brazil and uh, you get the idea. We, we've done India, so Portugal. And not only that, I mean, you can change the colors. So notice, Right now, the colors are not changing at all because we didn't link it up. So we have color one and two. So this one right here is the top shape. We're going to assume this is going to be the primary color, and then we have the secondary color. So I'm going to say top shape color. You're going to be primary color one. So we're going to say color one. And then the secondary color here, we're going to say you're going to be color two. So now when I change to something like Brazil, you can see we'll automatically also change the colors, which is awesome. So essentially, this is it. It changes the logo. It changes the name, it changes the colors, all from one single drop-down menu, and it's super handy. And at any point, you can um, actually disable it. Maybe you don't want any of them. You can just say, go over here, none. It will delete it, but obviously you have the shapes, and you can go over here and rig it up to where it says, hey, when it's set to the first item, uh, set both of these shapes opacity to zero. You can do it that way. But now the only problem with the list here, you can't really drag it into your essential graph. Like when you start building your uh, essential graphics or your Mogurt to go into Premiere to change, right? Because you want that to, this thing to be able to, you want editors to adjust these in Premiere, but you can't really drag it into the essential graphics panel because it is already 
essential property, right? So what you need to do is very simple. Just go back to the composition here, go to the controls and uh, select the flag dropdown menu, copy it, and then go back to the main composition here, go to controls here, and just paste it in here. So you have just a drop down menu, it doesn't do anything, but then you can link it up. You can say, hey, this flag drop down menu, we're gonna tell you to be this flag. And so now you can go to this one and you can adjust things on the fly here. And yeah, it will work like a charm. You can do the same thing with all of them as well. You can bring in any kind of controls here, maybe the colors or whatever you wanna do, and it will do the same thing. But for the most part, you have the drop down menu. Now you can go over here, press E to see all of your properties and you can bring that in. And now you can adjust things on the fly. Editors can do that, you can export it. And that's it, that's really how simple it is. And uh, that's what this tool does. It will definitely save you lots of time, especially if you do this kind of work and it gives you more options. I started out first just as a simple drop down menu tool. That's why it was called Smart Menu. I just wanted something to create a drop down menu quicker. For example, I remember I was working on the MLB graphics um, for Fox Sports. I was creating Mogurts and I had to create um, just a simple drop down menu for like 30 some teams and I had to manually like type it in. I'm like, it was frustrating when I had a list of them, like just a bunch of logos that I could have just selected and then boom, run them and create a simple drop down menu. So that's where this idea came from because I, I got burned so many times, you know, and then I realized, hey, maybe I should create a tool. And that's why I did it. So anyway, thank you again for your support. Thank you for getting all of our tools. Uh, we get to do what we do because of your awesome support. So we thank you. If you're not a part of our mentoring group, it's totally free. It's on Facebook. Go to ukramia.com slash community. Definitely join that group. We have some heavyweights of this industry just rubbing shoulders with everybody. You'll be surprised who you'll be talking to. I mean, there's a lot of important people there and a lot of my heroes are there too. So yeah, definitely join that. Again, ukramia.com slash community. And uh, just to show you that I do use smart tools that I create. So here's the composition that the thing that I just showed you, right? It's a simple design, simple animation. But if you look closely, I mean, this text right here, for example, I used smart anchor, right? To anchor, to use, to put the anchor at the bottom left and lock it in, right? So I use smart anchor, I used smart size to reference the size. I use smart mask, right? The mask tool. I used smart animator to animate the text. And uh, what else? Well, that one is it. But then like these two, both of those shapes are smart rex. So yeah, I, I definitely use my tools. And also for like text animation, like all this, um, not text animation, but keyframe animation, I used Smart Ease. That thing is super helpful as well. So just wanna show you that whatever I create, I created because I need it. So I use them daily just as much as you guys. But again, thank you for everything. My name is Sergey Braknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com. <laughs>